I was left behind in a dream that the Lord gave me. And it was scary. And it put the fear of the Lord in me. And when I woke up, the Lord showed me that it was a warning to me. And this happened a year ago, but I'm sharing this with you today because I got released from God to share this with you. And now God has given me understanding on what this means. And I know that uh, many of my brothers and sisters out there have actually received similar dreams. Um, today I woke up with a text from someone, one of my brothers in Christ, Zach. I actually was with him in Kentucky and we became really close. And we uh, have been praying together. And also he sent me a message that he received a left behind dream last night. And he asked me, what does it mean? Well, I shared with him, it's a warning. See, it's not, it's not a condemnation thing, okay? It's a loving warning. Hey, son, come back into me and let me keep you by my power and by my strength. Allow me to continue to work inside of you. Let me fill you with my spirit so that you may have oil. And I'm going to share the dream that I had, and I'm going to actually read the text that he sent me, and they're very similar. And I believe that the God is warning his people that he's coming soon. And I'm going to talk about in his word real quick on who are the people that are going to be left behind. Like when Jesus Christ comes and the rapture takes place and, and God has taken his bride, who are going to be those people that Jesus says, I never knew you or I do not know you. And we're going to look at that in the word of God. And we're going to talk about the five wise virgins and the five foolish. But before I do that, let me, let me share with you guys my dream that I had about a year ago um, or a year and a half ago two years ago. It was right when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, but God was still working on me. He was still maturing me and he was showing me how to walk in him. Well, I had this dream that I was uh, in the middle of the streets in my neighborhood and I was smoking weed and I was, I was really scared, you know, I was smoking weed because that's what I came from. God pulled me and set me free from that. But I was smoking weed in the dream and I'm looking up at the night sky and then all of a sudden, boom, I'm, um, the Lord comes down in this dream, but it's scary. It's not the side of Jesus Christ that is all, you know, like happy and joyful. It's, it's a scary side of God. Okay. put the fear of God in me and I got left behind and I saw people go up and I was left and destruction started coming upon the earth. And, and I started running inside into my house trying to find protection, but I ultimately was not protected. And I woke up now, that dream really put the fear of the Lord into me, as I said, but it was a good thing. It was God wooing me back into his arms saying, son, do not go back into your vomit like a dog returns to his vomit. Don't go back into the world. Don't go back into the pleasures of this world. It's not worth eternal destruction. It's not worth judgment because God is coming back for people, a bride without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. So as I had that dream a year ago, I didn't share it with anybody except I kept it between the Lord and I to know, God, I want to stay in you and I want to stay pure and I want to stay ready before you. Well, last night uh, I got a text or this morning I woke up and I had a text and it's from Zach and he, he told me, he said, yo, I had a crazy dream a couple nights ago. I went outside and I saw an angel with a staircase coming down from heaven. And it's like in my dream, I wasn't a Christian and I didn't live for Christ. And instantly I was full of regret and started praying and asking God to forgive me of my sins. And I'm trying to figure out what that meant. Well, the Lord, I prayed on it and he told me it's a warning dream. To have your lamp full of oil is what I responded. I've literally had the same exact dream before. And um, when I had some sin in my life, I'd not yet got rid of it, as in smoking weed, vaping, and watching porn is what I responded to him. And then I sent him Matthew 25 about the parable of the wise, wise and foolish virgins. Now, was it too late for him after he realized that he had not lived for Christ? Was it too late? We're going to look at this real quick and we're going to look at the people who would be left behind. What state are you in today? What state are you in today with the Lord Jesus Christ? Is something we need to recognize in ourselves so that we can walk in the calling and in the fullness and in the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. But it's not a joyous thing to be left behind. So we're going to look first in Matthew 25, the parable of the wise and foolish virgins. You know what's interesting? This ministry is called Seeking Wisdom Ministries. I sought after wisdom. I cried out for wisdom. I wanted to know wisdom, not the wisdom of this world, but the wisdom that comes from above. The wisdom that God has. The wisdom that God stretched forth the heavens and created all things. I wanted to know that wisdom because I was hungry and thirsty after righteousness and still am to this day. But there's nothing like when you first come to the Lord Jesus Christ, it's a beautiful honeymoon phase and God just reveals himself in such a great way. And God still gives me encounters with him to this day. 
but it's a beautiful thing when you first come and you first get the fire of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, as I was seeking wisdom, and then I come along to Matthew 25, and I'm like, wow, God, I don't think that was a coincidence. You have me, the calling that God's placed on my life, and I'm learning this morning each and every day is to edify the saints as the fivefold ministry, and I'm trying to figure out, God, where am I placing? And he's called me to preach. He's called me to preach and wake up the people, the bride, the sleeping bride. So this is for those who may have had left behind dreams too. And you're wondering, I don't want to be left behind. Well, this is how you know. These are the people what I'm about to read. Those who are left behind and those who are ready. So let's look and let's dive in. Praise the Lord. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your truth. God, I pray as I read your word that you will open up the eyes of the blind, that you will open up the ears of the deaf, God, that dry bones will awaken, God, and we can be ready for you. Our lamps full of oil, our lamps full of fire by the Holy Spirit, light, hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We want to be ready for you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so Matthew 25, it says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom, which is Jesus Christ, or the bride. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. To those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took their oil and their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should be not enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding. And the door was shut. Verse 11, Afterward the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, Open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you neither know the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Guys, it's a mystery. We don't know the exact hour or day, but we can know the season of his returns, as did they. How? Why? Because verse 6 says, At midnight a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. And that's what happening. That's what's happening right now, guys. There's a midnight cry. There's a cry. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Behold, Jesus is coming. But how many people are having their lamps full of oil and ready and not just going to be ready when he comes because when he comes at that point, it's too late. It's too late. You will be left behind. The, the wedding, those who are ready will be going into the marriage supper of the Lamb, which is glorious. Anything we could never comprehend how good it's going to be with God when we're standing before him. The bridegroom, when he's fully ready and he's suited up in his finest garments. And the bride who have made herself and purified herself, okay, zealous for good works, ready and prepared for the glory of Jesus Christ. It's going to be beyond comprehension. But there will be people, the Lord says in verse 11. They said, Lord, Lord. First off, we need to understand these are people who knew Christ at one point. Why do I say this? Because I'm going to get into the people who knew Christ and Jesus says to them, I do not know you. And the people who never knew Christ where he says, I never knew you. And those are people who worked miracles in his name. So that's a scary thing. So let's look at this and let's break it down a little bit in verse 11. Afterward, the other virgins, those who were left behind, those who weren't ready for the bridegroom, those who had no oil. And let me tell you, the, the lamp represents profession. Okay. Many people have lamps. Okay, the five, the ten virgins, they all had lamps. Okay, five of them had lamps, which were wise, and five of them who were foolish had lamps. They had their lamps, and they had them trimmed. But the five foolish had no oil. They didn't have the oil in us. They didn't know Jesus Christ intimately. There was no weeping before in the secret place of prayer. There was no, God, what is your will? There's no seeking him first in his kingdom. There's a selfishness to the foolish. They're, they're foolish. They're, they don't care, Okay. But they all had their lamps, which represents that they professed Jesus as Lord of their lives. Okay. The oil represents, like I said, relationship, knowing him intimately. And Jesus said unto them, but he answered and said unto the foolish, I say to you, I do not know you. So in that moment, he did not know them because there was no oil. Okay. They departed. They, they decided to still live in their sin and in the pool of flesh. They didn't want to be purified by the, the, by the Holy Spirit. They didn't want to be ready and, and have their lamps oil. So when he came and they realized, oh man, wow, 
well, we need to go to the house of God, right? Or we need to go to where they can sell more oil, which will be many churches. But guess what? There's not going to be enough. There's not, they're not going to be ready. Watch in, in verse 13. Therefore, for you know neither the day nor hour, which is the Son of Man coming. Now we're going to look at the people who never knew Jesus Christ. This is scary, but this is Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So who are those who do the will of the Father? Those who are being saved, those who are ready, those who are prepared, those who have a relationship with Jesus Christ. They pray, they eat of the bread of life, they drink of the life-giving spirit. Jesus says to his disciples and to many people, and after he said these words, they turned away from him because they were harsh words. He said, anyone who does not eat of my flesh, drink of my blood, has no life in them. Wow. They probably thought Jesus Christ was crazy. And he turned to his disciples. It says many disciples after him left him. And he turned to his disciples, will you leave me? They said, no. Peter said, no. You have the, the, the life of eternal words. You have the eternal words that lead to eternal life. So how many of us are going to be like that and not turn away from harsh sayings? Verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, casted out demons in your name, and done many wonders wonders in your name? They even got the name of Jesus Christ right. They did it in the name of Jesus. They, they, They partaked in the Holy Ghost communion at some point. They were people who just fell off. And then when I declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Fake. They were fake professing Christians. They never knew Jesus Christ. They partaked in the power of God, but not in the oil of God. They never knew Jesus Christ. They did many wonders and signs in Jesus' name. They, didn't, they cast out demons in Jesus' name. They prophesied and said, oh, uh, this, you shall receive a car in Jesus' name. They, you know, it's like, it's all flesh. It's all selfish. It's none of... God, it's not edifying, it's not glory, glorifying our God, our Father who art in heaven. Who are those being saved? Those who do the will of the Father. So the big telltale is those who practice lawlessness. They practice a lot, a life of sin. They didn't purify and get ready for Jesus Christ. So now I'm going to end it in this as I feel like I've been doing these last couple videos because each and every day God has been speaking to me through his word and through uh, the power of prayer, Ian Bounds. And I'm going to look, and this is the devotional, okay? It's watch, watch, watch. Ephesians 6, 18, pray in the spirit on all occasions. So we need to be a praying people on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Okay, let us pray to God. Let us go and shut the door behind us. Let us not pray in front of, uh, on the streets in front of people in the sense of with that prideful heart. It's okay to pray for people on the streets. It's okay to pray on the streets. Just they're the Pharisees were the ones who wanted attention from it. Let us go in humility and go with the Lord and pray to him because we want him, not because we want attention from it. In the New Testament, this is the notes. In the New Testament, there are three different meanings for the word watch. The first means absence of sleep. It implies a wakeful frame of mind. The second meaning is to be fully awake through carelessness or laziness. Something horrible could suddenly happen. The third means to be calm and collected in the spirit, cautious against all pitfalls and distractions. All three definitions are used by Paul. Two of them are used in connection with prayer. Watchfulness must guard and cover the whole essential man and prepare him for prayer. Everything resembling unpreparedness or non-vigilance is death to prayer. This is a prayer for all of us right now. Father, I realize that it is important to watch and pray always because our enemy prowls around like a hungry lion, lion, Help me, Lord, to resist the devil. Amen. So this is a time of watching. The midnight cry has sounded, and we need to watch, pray, and weep before the Lord, because he's coming soon. I love you all. Be blessed in Jesus' mighty name.